you ever used a map before? A map is a special drawing that can help you find the best way to go from one place to another or help you locate places. In this program, we'll learn about maps and how to use them. A map is a great tool. It helps to show us where we are. A map is a drawing of an area. There are many different kinds of maps. You'll often see maps that show areas of land. A geographical map can show things like water, mountains, and roads, but really, a map can be any kind of place. There are video game maps. There are maps of outer space. There are even maps of the human brain. Since we probably won't be poking around the human brain anytime soon, we'll focus today on common geographical maps. Most geographical maps are drawn from a top-down view. It's like looking down on an area from very high up. A map is much smaller than the actual area the map is showing. That's why symbols are often used to describe or represent common things. Shapes and colors are used to help us read maps. You can tell what each symbol means with a map key. There are some common symbols that are the same on almost all geographical maps. Water is usually drawn in blue, showing lakes, rivers, and oceans. Roads are usually drawn as lines, showing the route the road takes and often show the name or number of the road as well. A tree like this usually means there's a park there. Airports are represented with a picture of an airplane. If you ever get confused about what a symbol means, you can always look at the map key for help. Using a map key is important to reading a map. And when you can read a map, you can locate just about any place, anywhere. The oldest known map in the world was made around 25,000 BC in a place called Babylon. We now call it Iraq. It was drawn on a clay tablet. Let's talk about grids. To help you read a map more easily, many maps are broken up by a grid. A grid is a series of vertical, or up and down lines, and horizontal, or side to side lines. These lines come together to make squares on the map. Letters and numbers are used to name the squares. The squares aren't really on the land itself. The grids are used to make it easier to locate or find places on the map. Here's how a grid works. Let's say we want to find the park on this map. If I told you the park was located in grid H8, all you have to do is find the section H on the horizontal part of the grid, then count down vertically to section 8. Now that we know where our park is on the map, we can figure out the best way to get there. So we know that on our map the park is in square H8. And let's say we're in square B3. We can see how far it is between where we are and the place we want to get to. By looking at the map, we can see that if we follow this road, it will take us to the park. So how do we know which way to go? We use another tool, a compass. A compass has a magnetic needle that is naturally pulled to point towards the Earth's magnetic north pole. This means that the needle always points north. Once the needle has found its direction, you can turn the compass until the spot on it marked north matches the direction the needle is pointing. On a map, north is usually at the top, south is at the bottom, east is to your right, and west is to your left. These directions are printed on a map in a cluster of arrows known as a compass rose. It sort of looks like a flower showing north, south, east, and west as well as the in-between directions of northeast, southeast, southwest, and northwest. If you compare the compass in your hand to the compass rows on the map and line them up so north on each is pointing the same direction, you will soon see which direction you need to go to to get to the park. 
Knowing how to read a map and use a compass, you never have to be lost. You can always figure out which way to go. Most maps today are drawn with the north side up, but in medieval Europe, they were usually drawn with east facing up. East was toward Asia, which they called the Orient. That's why when someone is trying to figure out which way they are facing, they say they are orienting themselves. Now, we understand how to use basic geographic maps. And while using these maps is great for mapping smaller parts of the Earth, they become less accurate the larger the area. That's because the Earth itself isn't flat. Like all the other planets in our solar system, our planet Earth is round. In order to accurately show a very large part of the Earth, or even the entire Earth, we need a different kind of map, one that includes the curving of the Earth. The simplest way to do this is to curve the map itself, making it as round as the Earth. We call this sort of map a globe. Because a globe is round, it's the only true way of showing the entire Earth. A globe, like a flat map, uses colors and symbols. For example, oceans and lakes are blue. Land is green, brown, and orange. Globes have an imaginary grid system, similar to the one used on maps. The grids can be used to find places on it all over the world. The curved lines that form the grid on a globe are called lines of latitude and longitude. Lines of latitude go around the Earth a helpful trick to remember this is that they look like rungs on a ladder. Ladder and latitude sound similar, so it's easy to remember. Sometimes lines of latitude are also called parallels. The lines that run up and down a globe from the North Pole to the South Pole are called lines of longitude. Some people remember this by remembering that they are long lines, and longitude starts with the word long. Sometimes longitude lines are also called meridians. Latitude and longitude lines are measured in units called degrees. A degree is represented by a number plus this symbol. The line that runs around the very middle of the Earth has a special name called the equator. The equator is at zero degrees. Everything above the equator is called the northern hemisphere. Everything below the equator is called the Southern Hemisphere. The lines of latitude run from 0 degrees at the equator to 90 degrees at the poles. Any distance above the equator measured using this grid is measured in degrees north, meaning the number of degrees a place is located north of the equator. South of the equator, places are measured in their distance from the equator in degrees south. Lines of longitude are measured in degrees from a point starting at zero, too. But, unlike latitude, which finds its zero mark from the naturally widest point of the Earth, the equator, longitude starts at a zero point. It's called the prime meridian. The prime meridian is located at zero degrees longitude. It runs through Greenwich, England, and its exact spot is marked with a laser beam that shoots out of the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. The prime meridian divides the Earth into halves called hemispheres as well. The half of the Earth to the east of the prime meridian is called the Eastern Hemisphere. Everything to the west of the prime meridian is called the Western Hemisphere. The lines east of the prime meridian in the Eastern Hemisphere are called degrees east. And the lines west of the prime meridian in the Western Hemisphere are called degrees west. On most globes, if you start going any direction from the prime meridian, you will see that each line of latitude is marked in 15 degree sections. So 15 degrees east, then 30 degrees east, 15 plus 15, and so on, until we reach 180 degrees, which is the exact opposite side of the globe from the prime meridian. This spot, exactly opposite the prime meridian, is called the International Date Line. Many flat maps also show the network of latitude and longitude lines, but map makers have always had a problem drawing an accurate flat map of the world. Why? Because the Earth is round. But there is an interesting way to translate the Earth's round surface onto a flat drawing. 
It's called map projection. There are many types of map projections, but we are going to look at three of them. The first one is called an equal area projection. It divides the earth into equal areas, but it distorts or messes up the drawing, especially near the edges of the map. Notice the longitude lines are curved. The second is called a polar projection map. Unlike most maps, the center of this map is the north or south pole. Notice the lines of longitude are straight, while the latitude lines are circles. The third type of projection map is called a Mercator projection. It gives a good view of land near the equator, but this time the size of the land near the poles is distorted. However, like a simplified map, both the latitude lines and longitude lines are straight. No matter which kind of map or globe you use, you can find places on the Earth using latitude and longitude. When we use latitude and longitude numbers to find the location of a place, we call that set of numbers coordinates. Let's say we wanted to find out what was at 15 degrees south latitude and 60 degrees west longitude. Starting at the prime meridian, which is at zero degrees, we go west until we reach the 60 degrees west longitude mark. So now we're at 60 degrees west longitude, but still at zero degrees latitude. So to find 15 degrees south latitude, we look below the equator and follow the 60 degrees longitude line down 15 degrees to 15 degrees south latitude. What's there? It's the city of Mato Grasso in the country of Brazil. When we use the latitude and longitude numbers to find the location of a place, we call that set of numbers coordinates. Although most globes only show latitude and longitude lines every 15 degrees, it's important to know that there are even more lines of latitude and longitude between those lines. For example, between 30 degrees north latitude and 45 degrees north latitude, there are 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and so on up to 45 degrees north latitude. Since most places on Earth don't fall naturally on the 15 degree marks that map makers used, most places need to be found using these more exact degree markings. For example, Mount St. Helens in Washington State is located on the specific coordinates of 46.1 north latitude and 122.2 west longitude. Lake Victoria in Africa is 1 degree south and 33 degrees east. The distance between each degree of latitude is about 69 miles. So by knowing the latitudes, you can figure out the distance between places. There's one more set of imaginary but important lines that you might find on a map. These lines run north and south like lines of longitude, and they divide the world into different time zones. There are 24 time zones, each standing for one hour of time. The first time zone runs through the prime meridian, which you will remember sits at zero degrees. Because the prime meridian runs through Greenwich, England, we call its time zone Greenwich Mean Time, or Universal Time. Each time zone west of Greenwich Mean Time is one hour earlier than the one that came before it, while each time zone east of Greenwich Mean Time is an hour later than the last. Each time zone has its own name. If you go either east or west through 12 different time zones, you end up exactly opposite the prime meridian at the international dateline. This is where time changes from one day to the next. East of the dateline is one day earlier than it is west of the line. Now you've been introduced to some of the many kinds of maps available to help you find places, as well as some of the many ways to read the information that maps provide. With a little practice, you should be able to locate any place anywhere in the world using maps.